Hey guys, this is Just a Humble Cook. Welcome back to my humble channel. Today we'll be making a dish from one of my favorite restaurants here in Los Angeles, Bestia. I'll be recreating their lobster crostini. This episode will be broken down into the different components required for this dish. Timestamps will be in the description down below. By the way, if this is your first time here, please like and subscribe to the channel for more cooking content. Now, there are two things we need to make the day prior to making this dish. The first is preserved oranges. You're going to need half a cup of kosher salt, three tablespoons plus one teaspoon of sugar, 15 black peppercorn, one dried bay leaf, two sprig of thyme, and six oranges. We are going to start off by grabbing our peeler and peeling off all the rind off our oranges. Once we have all the zest off our oranges, grab your sharpest knife and lay the zest flat on the cutting board. And keeping your knife as parallel to the cutting board as possible, slice off the white part of the zest. This white part is called the pith and adds a lot of bitterness, so we want to remove as much as we can. This can be pretty time consuming, so just be mentally prepared for that, especially if you're not the most handy with a knife. And once you're done with that, you're going to set that aside. So grab your zest and we're going to throw that into a pot of water. Once it comes to a boil, strain out your zest and discard the water. We're going to repeat this process two more times for a total of three times. This step is super important because this will pull out any remaining bitterness left in the zest. Once you're done with that, grab a mixing bowl and combine your zest, salt, sugar, and thyme, bay leaf, peppercorns, and the juice of two oranges. Make sure you give it a nice mix. Now transfer it to a mason jar and tightly cover it. We're going to leave it at room temperature for at least 24 hours. Now for our second step, we're going to make our own pickled Fresno chilies. I feel like a lot of people think pickling is a difficult thing to do, but it's actually really simple. For this recipe, you're going to need one and a half tablespoons of kosher salt, one tablespoon of sugar, three quarter cup of red wine vinegar, a quarter cup extra virgin olive oil, and about 15 Fresno chilies. Fresno chilies have a beautiful fruity sweetness to them, but they also tend to be very spicy. To mitigate the spice, we're going to remove all the seeds. First, slice the top end of each chili. Then, using a small sharp knife, cut out the center part that holds all the seeds. Shake out all the seeds that are still hanging out inside the peppers. Doing this will make your pickled Fresno chilies much less spicy. They'll still have a kick, but you'll be able to enjoy the flavor of the chili more without dying from the heat. Thinly slice the Fresno chilies, but not too thin. When we pickle them, they'll slightly shrink and we want them to still have some integrity at the end. In a bowl, combine the chili, salt, sugar, and toss it to mix. After it's all nicely mixed, we're going to let it sit at room temperature for about 30 minutes. After 30 minutes have passed, throw in your red wine vinegar and our extra virgin olive oil. Give that a nice mix and we're going to transfer that to our mason jars. Cover it with plastic wrap, tightly seal it, and we're going to let it sit at room temperature overnight. This part is going to be a two-step process. For the first part, we'll be making our aioli from scratch. Grab a quarter teaspoon of packed saffron threads, one tablespoon plus one teaspoon of boiling water, two cloves of grated garlic, two egg yolks, a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil, one and a half cup of neutral oil, and two tablespoons of lemon juice. First, in a small bowl, pour the boiling water over the saffron threads. We're going to stir it and let it steep for 10 minutes. This will rehydrate the saffron and bring out the beautiful flavor and the color of the saffron. Now in a larger bowl, add the egg yolks, garlic, and lemon juice. We're going to whisk in half of the saffron water and mix it. 
while whisking slowly drizzle in the combined oils. If you put the oil in too quickly, it is possible that your aioli will separate, so go slowly and take your time. And if your arm gets tired, there's no shame in switching hands. As you whisk, you're going to notice that your aioli is going to get thicker and thicker. Once you've added about half your oil, we're going to add in the rest of the saffron water. We'll stack together and we're going to add the rest of our oil. At the end of it, your aioli should be nice and thick and it should be this beautiful color. And now that's done, let's move on to the second part. Remember that preserved orange we made yesterday? We're going to be using that in this part. Take a few peels of the preserved orange out and rinse it. Always make sure to rinse it before you use these, otherwise they will be way too salty. Give them a nice wash and chop them up nice and small. Now you're going to need 2 tablespoons of squid ink, 2 teaspoon minced preserved orange, a tablespoon of chopped parsley, 3 quarter teaspoon of chili flakes, 1 tablespoon plus 1 teaspoon fish sauce, a pinch of kosher salt, and 2 cups of our aioli that we just made. Now this part is pretty simple. Combine everything except for the aioli in a bowl. Then we're going to fold our mix into our base aioli. Don't forget the minced parsley like I did. And that's it, our squid ink aioli is ready to use. And now for the exciting part, make sure that you buy a live lobster. It is important to keep your lobster alive as long as possible before it is processed. When the lobster dies, the bacteria starts to almost immediately enter the meat. Now before I break it down, I like to chill it down. By chilling them, it puts them into a catatonic state that makes them easier to handle. Now grab a one pound lobster, a half an onion, one carrot, one stalk of celery, one head of garlic, two dry bay leaves, one sprig of thyme, 15 black peppercorn, two juniper berries, three tablespoons of white wine vinegar, one tablespoon kosher salt, and six cups of water. Now we're going to add all our ingredients into the pot except for the lobster. If you're squeamish, you might want to skip this part of the video. Grab your knife and put the tip of your blade into the back of its head and push straight through. Bring the knife down towards the front of the head and cut all the way down. This will instantly kill the lobster without unnecessary suffering. Don't worry, take your time with it. I've processed many live lobsters and I still get a bit squeamish about doing it. Now twist the tail to separate it from the main body. Once you detach it, use your knife to cut the flesh. Then we're going to twist off the claws and set it off to the side. Freeze the head so that you can use it for soup or stock in the future. Bring your water up to a boil and put your lobster tail in. We're going to cook it for about 45 seconds. We're just gently poaching the tail. We want the inside to still be almost raw. Make sure you have a bowl of ice water ready for the lobster. As soon as it's cooked, drop it into the ice water and we're going to chill it for 10 minutes. Now for the claws, we're going to be cooking it all the way. We're going to cook these for 3 minutes. Once they're done cooking, we're going to throw these into the ice water as well. After it's been thoroughly chilled, we're going to get all the meat out of the claws and tail. For the tail, grab scissors and cut all the way down the belly of the lobster. Then just crack the back and the meat will pop right out. For the claws, just use the blunt side of your knife to crack through the shells and pick out the meat. For some of the smaller joints, I like to use my scissor and just kind of cut through them. Then grab a cutting board and we're just going to slice them into little pieces. Now on the tail, make a shallow incision across the top to remove the poop line. That's disgusting. Give it a nice rinse and we're going to cut these into bite-sized pieces as well. 
Notice how the inside is just barely cooked? That's what you want. Once you're done cutting up the rest of the lobster, combine it with one tablespoon of lemon juice, one teaspoon of extra virgin olive oil, and just a little bit of salt. Toss it together and let's move on to the final part. We finally made it to my favorite part, the plating. To start, cut a nice thick slice of your favorite bread. I got this loaf from Tartine Manufactory here in Los Angeles. They are one of my favorite bread makers in the city. If you're ever in town, definitely check them out. Now brush your slice of bread with extra virgin olive oil. In a hot pan, we're going to toast both sides until there's a nice char. Alright, we're going to start off by rubbing raw garlic on both sides of the bread. Spread a thin layer of the squid ink aioli and gently place the lobster throughout the crostini. Garnish with Thai basil, parsley leaves, and the pickle fresno chili that we made earlier. Hit it with some fresh lemon zest and flaky sea salt, and it's ready to go. Thank you guys for checking out my video, and once again, if you haven't liked or subscribed to my channel, please do. It really helps me out. I'll see you guys in the next video.